Ooh. Hi gorgeous, this is Sabrina here. Today's video is a character transformation for one of the greatest comedic actresses of our time, Lucille Ball. I didn't know anything about Lucille Ball. I had never even watched I Love Lucy episodes. I know, shocking! Lately I cannot get enough I Love Lucy episodes and what an amazing inspiring woman Lucille Ball was. She had an innate business savvy about her but she was also such a talented gifted comedic actress on screen. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing some fun facts about her that you may or may not know both from her personal and professional life. Let me show you the entire transformation into Lucille Ball. Before we get into the real makeup portion of the video, I'm prepping my face with a moisturizer and I'm also applying Benefits Professional to help reduce the appearance of my pores. I'm also applying an eyeshadow primer. I'm using the Urban Decay one in this look. First eyeshadow I'm using comes from Wet n Wild. This is Creme Brulee and I'm applying this lightly all over my eyes. This is going to set a nice base for the look. Eyeshadow was very minimal in the 50s, if barely applied, and Lucille Ball really didn't wear much on her eyes. She was more about lashes and lips, but her eye shape was more deep set. So to mimic the shape that she had, I'm going to contour the sockets with an eyeshadow from Jane. This is in the shade Natural, and I'm using a fluffy brush. This is the MAC 286 brush to go along the crease line and define that area of my eye so I get more of a deep set look like she had. Next I'm taking a deeper brown. This is Max Handwritten and I'm using this as an eyeliner on both the upper lash line and the lower lash line. I'm only applying this onto the outer half of the upper lash line. Lucille Ball's lash line was really darkened, but she didn't really bring any liner into the inner corner of her eyes. It was kept more so on the outer edges of her eyes. In some of her pictures, she does have a slight wing on the outer corners of the eyes, but it wasn't dramatic. It was kept very minimal. I'm also using the same eyeshadow to line the outer half of the lower lash line. Just like we did with the upper lash line, we're lining only the outer half of the lower lash line. I'm also applying a nude eyeliner onto the waterline. If you look closely at a lot of her pictures, she did have a very vibrant looking waterline, and she probably used either a white or a nude eyeliner, although it's really hard to tell which one. For the brows, I'm using one of MAC's Brow Fluid Lines in the shade Redhead, and Lucille Ball's eyebrows were very thin, curved, and they went into an arch pattern. So that's the shape that I am going to mimic here. My natural brows kind of already do that, so I'm rounding them some more and emphasizing that arch a little bit more too. Lucy loved false eyelashes. She was never without them, and I love that she was like that. So I'm taking a pair from Coco Lashes in the style Misha and applying these onto the eyes. And I took a great amount of time to really study her lashes, and I noticed that they were long, wispy, and very natural looking, and so that's why I selected this pair. I feel like they mimic what she would have worn. I'm going to breeze through the face application. I'm applying my yellow concealer, a green concealer to hide the redness, and my foundation as well as a regular concealer to hide the color corrector. And I'm blending everything in with a damp beauty blending sponge. It goes without saying that her skin was flawless. She had the most beautiful, fair complexion, and it was simply beautiful. It looked like porcelain. And with that same beauty blending sponge, I'm also applying a translucent powder to set the face and give it a matte finish. No shine, no shininess on her face whatsoever. And now that I have the face applied, I'm applying my mascara. I found out that if I apply my mascara before I do my under eye area, it tends to wipe everything away. So by doing it afterwards, it helps it to stay in place and not disappear on me. And Lucille Ball's lower lashes were just as emphasized as her upper lashes. 
I'm also applying a light rosy pink blush. This is Max Tenderling, and the blush application was a little bit different on her face. Instead of applying it directly onto the apples of the cheeks, she applied it more on the sides of the face and carried it up into the temple area. And so that's the way I am applying it here also. Lips, lips were very important. It was one of the most notable characteristics about Lucille Ball. Now in the 50s, you may remember this from the 50s video, the trend was to overdraw the lips. And Lucille Ball did that intentionally, and I'll talk more about that here in a minute. So what she did was she really emphasized above the lip line on the top lip and curved it out. It's hard to explain. I'm glad you're able to see a video on this because it's a really hard lip shape to describe. And this is how smart she was. She had a very definitive reason for doing this. What I love the most about Lucille Ball is that she was not afraid to take risks, and she did that big time, especially when it came to the way she applied her cosmetics. And the reason she did her lips in this shape is because it emphasized her funny facial expressions. And it really did. If you watch her lips in a lot of the episodes of I Love Lucy, there's a lot of attention there because of the overdrawn and overstated lip shape. And bar none, red was her most favorite color lipstick and also a very popular color in the 50s. Another one of the popular trends of the time was to have your nails match your lip color. So of course her nails were always red. Now I did dye my hair for this tutorial. Don't worry, it's only temporary color. It'll wash out, but it is a beautiful red and I'll list it below if you're interested in the color. Lucille Ball's hairstyle was called the poodle. And so to accomplish this, I am first creating deep parts on both sides of my head, taking the top section and pinning it up. And I'm also taking the bottom section that's left there and putting it up into a high ponytail on the back of my head. Normally to create this kind of a hairstyle, you would use the pin curl method, but I'm just not that patient. So I'm going the hot roller route. But the first thing I did was I applied the hot rollers all over the ponytail section in the back there and then I clipped away a little portion of my bangs because we're going to be doing those separate in the tutorial and then I focused on putting the hot rollers onto the top section of the hair okay so now that all of the hot rollers have cooled I've gone ahead and taken them out and I'm going back with the front bang area that we clipped away earlier and I'm using I think this is a one inch curling iron to curl each piece individually and so when I rolled these pieces up around the face, I relied on the curl that was created with the curling iron, rolled it on itself, and then pinned it. And I continued to do that all the way down the top portion of my head. And you can see that I changed because I realized halfway through here, if I don't change now, I am gonna mess up this hair. And now that I have all the pieces curled on the top portion, I'm gonna take random sections from the ponytail and begin to curl them up to meet where the end is at the crown of the head there. I feel like this hairstyle would look a lot better on somebody with short hair simply because the curls on top of the head are really, really big on me. And if my hair were shorter, they would be a lot less fluffy looking, but you know, you gotta work with what you got. Let me just tell you that this is not an easy hairstyle to do. It took me about three tries. You have no idea how much film I had to go through to edit. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And eventually that is what you get pretty darn good for doing it three times. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 